Hello and welcome to Life Questions, COVID concerns and how we're interacting with others. Those are some of the topics on today's show. We're so glad, so happy to have you with us. I'm Jennifer Beck filling in today for Bill Harris and I'm joined by an incredible group of pastors. Let's go ahead and meet them. Joining us on today's panel, Nathan Branham of Grace Fellowship Church in Lima, Patrick Kamler of Westminster Christian Church in Westminster, Tyler Perry of Anastasis Church in downtown Lima and Rich Reiki, pastor of Delphus Trinity United Methodist Church. Thanks, gentlemen. We're so glad to have you with us here as we're getting our productions back going in 2021, which we are so very grateful for. Well, we're going to jump right into our discussion with a topic that is affecting everybody. And we're going to talk about COVID specifically in regards to churches or interactions. We had a a comment come in from one of our viewers it says my church still hasn't gone back to in person services, even though I realize it's important to be safe. This bothers me. I think we should have a right to gather together if we want. Gentlemen, I don't know who wants to jump right in, but church has definitely changed in the physical sense in the last year. What are, I don't think this is an easy topic for any pastor or leader. Most churches closed down at some point. I mean, we, we closed down in March until the end of May. Um, we transitioned to our family life center so we could social distance and we're requiring folks to wear masks. We also went online to give people an option to say, look, if you don't feel comfortable coming, um, you know, stay, stay online and connect with us that way. But I think a key thing was we took the best guidance we could from our denominational leaders, our bishop, we sat down as a board and we made a decision together as a leadership team. So when you're specifically talking about the church, I think it's important to say, what is the process where those decisions were made? Mm -hmm. And and are people on board and are they communicating? And understand that no matter what decision a church makes, you're not going to make everybody happy. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. But how do how do we, even in the middle of a crazy crisis like COVID, live out biblical principles mm -hmm. of treating each other well, of respecting opinions. And, and if the, you know, if there's a, I won't say a rogue pastor or somebody who has a, a lot of power or, or is making a, you know, an ultimatum decision, that's a, that's a different case. And there's a, maybe a process to resolve that, but it shouldn't affect, it shouldn't turn you into a person that you, you don't want to be, or that doesn't reflect the love of Christ. I love what you said there. I think there's something really, really important. We honor our leadership, right? And so you honored your leadership by going to your denominational leaders, helping process that conversation. I think so often we can have decisions made that affect us and we don't have all the requisite information that we need. And so we make a judgment that isn't necessarily accurate. Um, and the second thing that I think is really important is to remember what is the identity of the church? Is the identity a building? Is the identity a service? Or is the identity of the people? Mm. Um, we are the church and whether or not we can meet in our buildings doesn't determine whether or not we're the church. We can gather together in homes. We can celebrate who God is, what he's been doing in our lives. And so whether or not we can have a corporate worship service doesn't determine who our identity is. We're still the church. And I know as a pastor, if our church wasn't able to meet, if my people said, hey, I, I really need to meet in person, I would say, hey, gather in your homes. Or if there's a church nearby, that you want to go attend and they're open and they're able to do it, go for it. I want you to experience all that God has for you more than I need to you know, have you just attend my church, if that makes any sense. When we switched, we did a lot of online stuff in, I think, March, April, I think April. The, the year just kind of blurs together after a while. But one of the things that I personally got a little tired of hearing was that the church was closed. I listened to that for about a week or two. I said, no, that's not the right attitude. In fact, when I wrapped up my online services, because we went online for about two months only. So look, the church has never been more open. There is no shortage of, of teaching, of worship, of, of access to things. And maybe you are not able to meet specifically with, with your people, with your congregation, uh, but there is a lot of opportunity out there to, to hear the word of God, uh, to pray for others. I mean, that opportunity did not diminish. In fact, it, it grew a lot. But kind of speaking to your points about community, I know for... Uh, for my church, when we made decisions, what, what I tried to do was make decisions based on what, um, what I felt and what we felt was the best for our community. So all of our communities look different. We have people who are 
higher risk. We have people who are immunocompromised. We have people who are perfectly healthy. You know, what is the best for your congregation in that particular sense? That's what we try to have as kind of our guiding star, so to speak. And also with that knowledge of, it's not necessarily my job to keep you safe. It is my job to point you to Christ. Mm -hmm. Can we do that without being reckless? I think we can. And that's what we've striven to do these last few months. You want to add anything in? Tyler it? took my answer. So. He took your answer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, you know, you, you mentioned something that let's hypothetically, we'll say your church is closed for specific reasons and not the church is closed, but your building is closed. And you said, you know, if, 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 if there's a church nearby that's open, go to it. And I think that's great because you are encouraging people. But the other thing that I thought was really interesting personally, um, as we went through this period of time when most churches were not meeting in buildings, I found it incredibly encouraging at the number of online services I was able to watch. I watched my own service. I watched some of Patrick's services. I watched other people's services. And the, I think the people who have stayed focused on Christ through all of this, hopefully have also recognized the, the incredible value that's happened because of the online necessity. Um. Yeah, if, if COVID has taught us anything is that we need to be adaptable mm. to anything that's thrown at us. And uh, I know for a lot of churches that weren't online, now they're online. And um, so it, it's really been, I know for me as a pastor, a uh, time where I'm just learning and really trusting. This has really pressed me to trust even more. And, and I know a lot of people are asking even some of our questions are like, why is this happening? You know, is God allowing this? And, and ultimately, I think if we keep that in perspective, no matter how bad it gets, we're going to win. Yeah. Good. So if I'm going to jump back a little bit to our question that we even started with, and I'll switch it up just a kind of bit. The question was, my church still hasn't gone back to in-person services, even though I realize it's important for us to be safe. It bothers me that we're not together, and I think we should have a right to gather. Um, one of the things that maybe is a negative through all of this is there are people who have gotten comfortable with not being in that church setting. And even as the doors have reopened, have chosen to not return, maybe for health related reasons, which are understanding, but maybe for other reasons. And I know personally, I think there's an incredible important value of gathering with the body of Christ. And as you guys have reopened that, have you reopened your churches? Have you sensed that as well, that just getting the believers together is a key to getting through what we're going through? I think it's a double-edged sword, like you said. Those who are hungry can see a plethora of resources out there in multiple services. I, I enjoy the fact that, you know, I, I can't go because I'm in church myself to other services, but if they're online, I can touch base and see what some of my colleagues are doing and get some wisdom and insight or feed my own spirit, which is, which is an advantage. But the online option for us, I'm, I'm just going to speak for my people, uh, does feed the consumeristic approach to faith. And it does give uh, an option for people to take it or leave it mm. when they want, to not be really held accountable to being in person in worship, um, to not necessarily engaging with other believers, and, and it and it can create you know silo Christians. I'm I'm feeding my own spirit, but it isn't real genuine faith if you're not living it out mm. with other people. So. It, it's, it's a double-edged sword, and I see both sides, and, but it really is an individual journey to figure out why are you engaging? Are you mm -hmm. genuinely seeking the Lord in this? And if it's, you know, you're gathering information and you're growing in your spirit, it ought to compel you to participate with other believers mm -hmm. in some way, whether in church or in, when you go to work or in your family. That faith is... You know, the f key phrase that, that I've tried to instill in our people is faith was, is deeply personal, but it was never meant to be private. Mm. I mean, it is your own relationship with the Lord, but it was never designed to be a private matter. That's, that's a great point. We live in a world that says everything is private. Well, 
really nothing's private anymore, but sure. like you said, and we, we need that community. Um, and you mentioned when we, before we even came on set was that you launched your church. So yeah. Anastasis Church, and we'll talk about this after the break um, about everybody's churches, but you launched it in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. But when people came, they thanked you. I mean, people became so thankful for the opportunity to have the community, which we wanna encourage you at home. If you are lacking that community, do not sit back and feel like um, that that's where you have to stay. Because even though you're hearing all of these statistics and hearing so many things, the community of God still exists and still wants to reach out to you. And you saw that once you got things going. Absolutely, yeah, we, we intended on launching in, in the spring, but with the pandemic, we weren't able to do so. And so launching in November, we actually had several people come up to us, tears in their eyes saying, thank you for opening during the middle of this. We need hope, we need light, we need you know some semblance of, of hope to cling to and you doing this really provided us with a lot of hope and so thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's so much power in meeting together. You said we need to adapt. Like you said, we have to be ready to adapt and I think the church should leverage technology to reach people all over the world. You know, There's people who don't know Jesus and technology is an amazing resource to do that with, but nothing beats the in-person encounter. Yeah. Online, you can have the feeling of intimacy, mm -hmm. but in person, you can have the experience of intimacy. And I really think that's a walking, talking example of what Rich just said about yeah. our faith was not meant to be solely private. Like we're meant to be in community with one another. And even, even if that's still there has to be made adjustments too, there has to be a gathering of believers to, you know, what is God doing in your life? Or this is an opportunity for a bunch of people to get together and worship God and, and all the other things that kind of go along with that in terms of, you know, distancing and masks and all that other kind of stuff. But that importance of being together, that what God does is not just between me and God, it also involves everybody else who's part of a faith community. That's good. I think we've become way too casual about the, the corporate gathering uh, Hebrews chapter 10, a very serious portion of scripture talks about uh, these kind of detrimental sins, and uh, deadly even, and, and listed there is gathering together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to be very casual, even as a pastor, ah, I come to church, don't come to church, but Hebrews 10, 25 says, you know, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. So this, the, the technology, online church, that's great. It's a stopgap measure, but we've, we've got to get back together. I think mm -hmm. that we need as, as the body, uh, we need to, to make that a priority, you know, in getting back together, like you said, this, you know, shouldn't well, disrupt that. And the four of you, you know, you don't have the option not to go to church on Sunday morning. It's kind of required for all of you, but for someone like me who doesn't have that, I can tell you how many times I've had a very, very tough week. Um, I really need a break. And, you know, I'll just sleep in Sunday morning. I'll just. Hey, I have that too. I'm not <laughs> immune to that necessarily. But. Get to church, get around that group of people, and just that positive environment, it's incredible to me of what God can do through that and how important it is. We're gonna take a break, uh, but when we come back, we're gonna continue talking about the effects of COVID and how it's surrounding everybody these days, but how is it affecting relations with others, particularly even your family? We'll have more on that in just a moment. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. Welcome back to Life Questions. Perhaps there's a topic or a question that you think would be a great discussion topic for our panel. Well, you can send your inquiries to lifequestions at WTLW.com and perhaps you'll hear your question on an upcoming episode. Well, in this episode, we're going to continue our discussion about COVID, but we're gonna switch it to how it's affecting our relationships with others. Another question that came in to us says, my mother canceled Christmas way back in October and says we cannot visit. I think she is too caught up in fear and watches too much TV. I want our family back together. You know, gentlemen, when we started all this back in March, there were a lot of people didn't know what was going on. We were adjusting to things, but we've now moved into an emotional response point where we've got people who are very concerned 
we've got other people who are very fed up with the concerns. And now we see what like this family had. The mom canceled Christmas back in October. There was no chance to get together at all. Um, how, do we, how do we encourage people who are going through things like this? Because I know there's a lot of them. Well, I would suggest that if someone thinks that they're watching too much TV, that's probably accurate. That's probably not the thing to say on a TV show, <laughs> but here we are. Um, there is a, it, it, I think with a lot of this, there's been more issues that have kind of bubbled up to the surface in each of our lives more than just COVID. I think that the coronavirus has exposed a number of uh, facets about kind of our personal lives, uh, personal and corporate in terms of how we worship. I think that it has shown that there are a lot of us who struggle with anxiety. I think there are a lot of us who struggle with fear. I think there are a lot of us who struggle with identity. I think there are a lot of us who, uh, who just are really sure of the best way to move forward. And to know that there are things that we relied upon, whether it was the, the food supply or whether it was attending Sunday service or going to sports or all that kind of stuff has all just kind of thrown out and we don't know how to, how to struggle with it. You know, the COVID numbers are things we keep track of but we're not really keeping track of how many people have fallen into alcoholism or drug use, how many people are falling into depression, how many people have, have, God forbid, taken their lives over all of this. So there's so many of those things. And I see people responding differently based on what they feel like is the largest issue at hand. There are people who are looking at it you know, we have to we have to get this pandemic under control. So their response is going to be, I need to get back control in as many ways as possible. And why you are not seeing it the same way that I'm seeing it? Why are you not social distancing? Why are you not wearing a mask, you cretin? People are responding to it in different ways. And the people who are who have seen the other side or are fed up with the with the political debate on it and of all the numbers being thrown at them, they're just kind of thrown their hands up. I accidentally walked into a store and didn't put my mask on. There was nobody around me, so I was you know, safe. It wasn't that big a deal. And this other guy who didn't have his mask on looked at me in solidarity. Like we had, like we had bonded or something, like we were part of the resistance. I was like, no, I'm not making a statement here. I just forgot to put the thing on. I just want batteries, man. All right, I just want to get batteries and get out. But we've taken so many things and we've, and we've put so much more emotion on it and I think one of the things that we really need to do, and it, it, it's kind of Philippians 2, 3 is what encourages us, is that there needs to be a portion where we step back and we, and we take for a moment that we think of others ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe you have a very valid opinion of things that are going on right now. But in the interest of people who are weaker than you, if you want to make, if you want to make yourself feel better, not as well informed as you think you are, step back think of others ahead of yourself, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, because that's the mode that Christ took when he came down to earth, when he forsake all of the, of the power, all of the eternity, when he became a man, when he died on the cross for us, that's what he did. And in spite of everything, he died for our sins. He made himself a servant for us. And I think there's a lot of us that could step back and be servants for each other. And maybe that involves doing something that maybe you don't think is necessary. So how, how do we do that, gentlemen? How do we take those action steps and think about that? Because we are in an emotionally high-driven society right now. We had emotional issues before all this started. So this woman at home is frustrated with her mother. How does she set aside those feelings and do exactly what Patrick said? Well, I think first, Patrick hit it head on, and, and I like to call it redlining where if, if you're revving your engine and, and, you know, and it's, it's way up there, there, there's no margin to give if you, if you need a little bit of extra. If you, I mean, this is the definition of road rage. It's people are redlining in life. It, it wasn't the person that cut them off. They're throttling so high in the mm-hmm. rest of their life that when one little thing happens, that straw that breaks the camel's back or whatever, it sets them off. And so the first thing is this lady has to get at an emotional place where she can have a conversation without taking the bait to get into an argument. Mm. So where from a calm place, from a well thought out place, she can have her opinion, she can discuss it with her mother without losing her temper, without being angry, without having to win the argument, mm. without having to have her mother even agree with her, mm. but, but just allowing 
being at it a secure place herself mm -hmm. to have that conversation. And then the other part is nothing is prohibiting her from living her life. Mm -hmm. If mom doesn't want to gather, invite brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles over to your house. Continue to move forward and allow other people to live their own lives and not feel like they're less than or greater than simply because they have a different opinion. I, I think it's, it's you, you can go on with life and if mom has this perspective, you know, it, it's different. And, and on our household, we, we kind of locked up. My father-in-law is extremely ill with COPD, he's on oxygen, uh, very compromised immune system. And, and he was the one who called the family and said, look, I don't know how much time I've got left, and I don't care if it's COVID that kills me, but I'm not gonna die from missing my family. Mm -hmm. And so he's the one who said, you all need to come around because, and, and that was his person. Now, not every person's gonna have that attitude, mm -hmm. but he gave permission to come in. Now, on the other side of that, I've got two brothers-in-laws who are both football coaches and you know, they're around teachers, they're around lots of students. My sister-in-law works in the medical field. So if they felt ill or sick or there was a COVID positive test in their team, they s stayed away for a week or so to see what, let that play out. They were just being wise, but at the same time, uh, we can't allow fear to mm -hmm. rule our lives. I think it's really important that we just, as Christians, we lead with grace. And everything we do, we lead with grace, right? And, and we, we listen more than we speak at times. And we try to acquire the perspective of the other person. And so I, I think about these family relationships. They can be dicey and they can get hairy really, really quickly as we all have our own opinions. We all have our own desires. But just take a step back and say, okay, what is my mother really saying here? Mm. What is she really saying by canceling Christmas? Where is she at? And trying to gain that perspective, because like you said, redlining, let's find out why she's redlining. Let's find out why people are redlining. Rather than being angry with the red line, let's find out why. Let's take a step back and listen. So can you offer any suggestions to, we'll go back to this woman, and we know that she is not alone in this. She wants to respect her mother. Maybe she's past the anger, frustration. She wants to reach out, but mother doesn't want that open door. So how, how could that daughter or how could whoever this is be able to continue to show that love of Jesus knowing I'm not going to be able to walk through that door. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to physically visit, but I still want to be able to emotionally impact my family and not let division happen, which, you know, we know the enemy would love that. As I thought about all of this, uh, how can the enemy take us out? Well, through an illness can't take us out through an illness, well, let's take us out through division or let's take us out through mental struggle. You know, so many things that we've seen. So I feel like we really need to combat this with the love of Christ, despite some of these things that we're dealing with. Any thoughts on how to encourage, encourage people who are who wanting to reach out uh, to people who are choosing to remain closed up? I think one, one avenue would be, because a lot of times when when people don't want to meet on our terms, we just drop it. You know, I want to do this thing for you. And if you aren't, if you aren't liking that, then I'm not going to do anything. So I guess my suggestion or my thought would be, okay, in terms of this particular question, the mom that we meet, it's like, okay, you don't want to meet in person. What would make you feel comfortable that we can still have some semblance of community because the person wants community? but the mother wants safety. So where can we find the balance to where we're still able to get together in some form or fashion and still maintain some level of safety so that the mom does not feel like she's, you know, risking her life. Whether it's, whether you think it's valid or not, whether you think it's a real concern or not, and telling your mom that she's crazy is probably not gonna work. Take it from experience, it doesn't work in a variety of things, but Try to bridge that gap a little bit. I don't think we do enough of that, of trying to kind of see the, the perspective of the other person and assuming that maybe that person knows something that we don't. So try and bridge that gap, see what can work out between there. Because there's a lot of places in the middle between we're not meeting and meeting will kill me. It's like, so find the middle ground there in terms of, of, of figuring that out. And what that looks like could take any number of, of forms. So. My mom didn't necessarily feel comfortable getting together for Thanksgiving, so we did a Zoom Thanksgiving dinner where we, where we ate and we looked at a screen. Wasn't great. 
It wasn't perfect, <laughs> but that's what we did. And that's how we were able to still be together without being together. Yeah. Well, we are just about out of time and we had discussed that we were going to go into talking about how we reach each other or interact with each other despite the political situations that have been causing a lot of emotions. I think we're going to have to get into that next week. But before we go, I want to give each of you an opportunity to just give the viewers at home an idea of what's going on with your church. We know that we've got several people who are kind of restarting. They either don't have a church, their church is not back the way they'd like or they're ready for something new they're hungry for something so so we'll just start over here with pastor reiki um, tell us what's going on with your church in delphus and we'll move around for those of you at home we don't want you sitting at home alone forever we want you with the body of christ uh, delphus trinity has been uh, in person uh, since uh, may we've been back we're meeting at our family life center um, so that we can social distance. We're requiring folks that come in person to wear masks. We've got hand sanitizer stations and cleaning protocols and all of that. But there's something about gathering together, about being able to take communion together, uh, about worshiping, singing together. So, uh, but we are also online to give our folks the opportunity to either stay home or to connect. And we also air uh, on uh, the local t uh, radio station, we, they carry the message for a half hour uh, on 107.1. And, and that has been a ministry that they've done for years. And the listenership and the viewership uh, has gone up as people have appreciated mm -hmm. that opportunity. When COVID first happened, I started a daily devotional. I didn't know it was going to be a life sentence. Uh, it, 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 there's, a, there's a given, you guys will understand what I mean. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot mm -hmm. of effort. But, but people have connected and people have in, enjoyed and responded back. And so we are slowly getting back to full throttle with all the other activities. Um, youth group meets as well. If there, there's some positive cases, they go to Zoom, but otherwise they're in person. They try to distant. I mean, distance we're, we're doing junior church and nursery so we're we're really trying to get back into the full th throttle of things um, you know if schools can other businesses can I think uh, we, we ought not to live in fear as the church about that mm -hmm. all right pastor Tyler yeah we are a brand new church plant we got started uh, November 1st, 2020, at downtown in the Civic Center. We meet in the Cross Performance Hall every single Sunday at 10.30 a.m. And we've had an incredible couple of months as we've gotten started. We've seen people give their life to Jesus for the very first time. It's been absolutely amazing. And uh, the thing I really just want to communicate is no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter the mistakes you've made, we love you, we welcome you, but we believe God loves you. And so we'd love to invite you to just to join us. Every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. at the Civic Center, we've got a kids ministry for ages six months through 10 years old. And um, yeah, it's an absolute blast each and every Sunday as we hang out together and we, uh, we grow together as we follow Jesus. And I apologize, guys, we are running out of time. So we're gonna start next week. You're gonna find out about Pastor Nathan and Pastor Patrick's church very beginning next week when we pick back up with our conversation with these same four gentlemen. But that's gonna wrap it up for us on this episode of Life Questions. Don't forget, you can submit your questions or topics. Just go to lifequestions at WTLW.com. That's the email address, or you can call them into the station, 419-339-4444. We are praying for you. We care about you. You matter and you're important. We hope you have a great day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. 
Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at wtlw.com. <laughs>